small gun, big potential. My name's JR, and this is Warframe, built to destroy. Hey what's up pups, it's JR and we're back again with another episode of Built to Destroy. This time I actually do have a few things to bring up before we get into the video. First off, I now have an official merch store. Designs are limited right now because I just opened it obviously, but you can get my logo with a few different styles on t-shirts, women's v-necks, hoodies, and both 11 ounce and 15 ounce mugs. So if you want to support the channel in some other way than Patreon, my merch will always be linked in the description below. Next and last point before we move on. I've slightly updated my quote-unquote stream schedule to include weekends as well as weekdays. But of course, due to my lax approach to streams, I don't have a dedicated time I start streaming. So make sure to go to the links in the description and follow me on both Twitch and Twitter to be the first to know whenever I go live. In addition, I also make sure to change my nickname in the JR Community Discord to say whenever I'm live. So if you want a little extra buffer to know when I'm streaming, you can also go ahead and join the Discord using the link in the description. As I mentioned before, it's completely public. So with that out of the way, let's head into the actual video. I've used a lot of weapons in my 5 years of playing Warframe. Mind you, not as many as many other people with my level of experience because Master Yank is my lowest priority in Warframe, but I've used many nonetheless. Among these weapons are weapons I've loved and enjoyed the hell out of, but for whatever reason, stopped using. The king of this class of weapons is our subject today. Long before all weapons were buffed with the primary and secondary Master Rank pass, and before beam weapons were buffed and changed with a beam weapon rework, I enjoyed using this weapon partially for the meme of how goofy and adorable it is, and partially because it was decently effective in the level of missions I was playing when I was using it. But now, most unused weapons have been buffed, and many beam weapons have been buffed. So even though I forgot about it, I've recently acquired a ribbon for my old friend, Spectra. Spectra is a corpus beam pistol obtained through the energy lab in your clan's dojo. It is supposed to be a form of high-powered handheld plasma cutter that has been weaponized, making it effectively the sidearm version of the more well-known Flux Rifle. Much like Flux Rifle, Spectra also has its own augment mod in the form of Sequence Burn. Sequence Burn gives Spectra 20 more meters of effective range, more than doubling the length of Spectra's beam, bringing it up to 38 meters. It being a Sequence mod can be obtained via the Parent Sequence Syndicate. This also gives Spectra the Sequence Syndicate effect, which causes a radiation damage detonation that hits everyone within 25 meters with 1,000 radiation damage. This also has a 100% status chance, so it always hits everyone it tags with a radiation proc, making it work effectively like a mini Chaos from Nyx. It also increases your Warframe's maximum shields by 50% of your Warframe's base shields, and restores them by 25% of your current maximum. I don't personally use this mod, but I can see many reasons why people might. Now back to the stats. Spectra comes loaded with 18 base damage favoring Slash, a 22% status chance, and a 14% crit chance with a 2 times crit damage. This makes it a very decent hybrid crit status weapon, which automatically boosts its potential to be a very solid weapon. If you attended at least the end of my livestream where I was leveling Spectra this last Saturday, I'm sure you know I actually end up forming the wrong polarity on my build. I meant to make Spectra corrosive damage to take advantage of Spectra's high relative slash damage as much as I could, but I accidentally made it so I could only make it one of the combo elementals you can make with cold damage, viral, magnetic, and blast. However, after getting the footage for this video, Spectra is still very viable when using viral damage. So I'm going to be keeping my Spectra viral, so it's more effective as a universal weapon instead of just an armor destroyer, especially because of my ribbon. Spectra Vizican increases my damage by 347.6% and multi-shot by 161.9%. This amps Spectra's damage by a substantial amount and makes its slash procs much more vicious. However, I still want to get a ribbon that adds either more slash damage or a crit chance, so my build is very much subject to change. Which, speaking of, I have Spectra Vizican, Hornet Strike, Deep Freeze, Barrel Diffusion, and Pistol Pestilence increasing my overall damage, status chance, and adding viral damage to the mix. Next, Primed Pistol Gambit and Hydraulic Crosshairs to increase my crit chance. I use Hydraulic Crosshairs because Spectra's crit chance is only 40% with Primed Pistol Gambit. And, it being a beam weapon, it's always dead accurate and you're going to be up in people's faces anyway. 
so you might as well headshot them as much as you can, right? Finally, Lethal Torrent increasing my damage even more by adding more multi-shot and increasing my fire rate, thus increasing my overall DPS. With this 5 form build, and my ribbon specifically, aiming after a quick headshot obviously, Spectre gets up to 2,655 average overall damage and 50,978 DPS. So let's see what Spectre can do. That's going to wrap it up for this episode of Built to Destroy. If you enjoyed this video, consider dropping a like, and make sure to hit that subscribe button to become a pup if you haven't already. Also, if you want to support me in the channel, why not buy some merch, or support me on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. My name's JR, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah.